How would you feel if you were surfing and something grabbed you and dragged you down deep in the water? Or you came upon a dead body in the water? In this video, we will look at five of the creepiest things people have seen while diving or surfing. When the surfer was out in the water, he hit a big wave, a 10-footer. It was a rainy, dark, cloudy day, very overcast. He could barely see anything under the water or above it. He was about 200 meters from shore when he encountered a massive set. The surfer was so excited to see this huge wave, he wasn't even scared. He just wanted the wave to himself. So he got on his wave, but had a misstep, but he just went with it anyway. This is when he had the scariest experience of his life. He fell off the wave and something just took him to town, as he stated. It lifted him all the way up and over the falls. He thought he was okay, but nope, this was just the beginning. It kept pushing him down further and further. His ears were in so much pain and it was so dark and cold. He finally came to rest on what seemed like a very large, smooth rock. He felt it with his fingers while he was pinned to it. He was there for at least ten seconds, but it seemed like forever. Then he was able to sense with his feet that a ferocious current seemed to stop at the edge of the rock. It was trying to pull him over the ledge and down. He can hear it. At this point, he was really panicking. He must have paddled so fast that people did not know what was happening. Once he made it back to the beach, he just sat there and couldn't even talk. How he escaped and made it to the surface shocks him to this day. Even thinking about his experience still gives him the chills. The next surfer was on New Zealand's West Coast Beach when he felt something wrap around his leg. When he looked down, it was a fishing line. He kept pulling on it to see what it was attached to, but the line kept getting heavier. He even started to sink, so he hopped on his board to try and paddle closer to shore. Unfortunately for him, he slid off his board and ended up chest deep in the water. His friend went over to help him because he knew something was wrong. Both of them started pulling the fishing line when they saw a large silhouette in the water and dragged it to the surface. It turned out to be a dead body. Someone did die the week prior while rock fishing and went missing, so they assumed it was this person. When they looked at the body, they noticed a hook stabbed into his neck and fishing line wrapped around his face. They then called lifeguards to help and ended up vomiting due to the body missing his eyes. An old World War II ammunition ship off the south coast of England was full of brass-topped shells. Most had been taken by divers over the years and it was now very rare to see them, apart from a pile in one corner of the ship. This pile of shiny brass metals was miraculously untouched and remarkably clean after spending years underwater and you would find out why if you swam near them. The writer of the story states that out of the murky darkness swims the largest eel you'll ever see. It snakes forward and without exaggeration, this thing had a head the same size as a horse's head, full of jagged teeth. He could not see the body as it looped into the dark and deeper into the ship. No one got near those shells. It turns out for years, this thing has been guarding the shiny brass shells, slithering over them, making them shine. Then they found out at the bar later that the eel was famous in the area and many people went to the wreck just to see it. No idea why this giant creature was guarding them like a dragon in its horde, but some said eels are like magpies and like shiny things. At Sand Hollow Reservoir in Washington County, Utah, there's an old school bus and retired flight school airplane at the bottom for divers to explore. There's a geocache in the bus, so this writer stated that his brother, who's a retired army ranger, and he, a civilian mechanic with no diving experience besides trying to beat his son in a breath-holding contest in the pool out back, set out to find it on a sunny summer day. After about 15 minutes, they found the bus, rusted, rotting, and covered in algae. They entered the bus from the back and began searching for the geocache. They finally found it, signed it, and swapped the item out. What they took out was a piece of paper wrapped in multiple Ziploc bags and the zipper cut off and torched it to seal it indefinitely. On the paper was a single instruction. 
Item too large to put in container. Check driver's seat. They were intrigued, so they made their way out to the front. He wishes he made the next part up. He was the first to reach the driver's seat. He got to the front, and what did he find? A body, wrapped in trash bags and taped with a 45-pound chain around the ankles. Terrified, he let out a blood-curdling scream like a five-year-old who, just, who was just caught having a cookie right before bed. His brother, without reacting, grabbed the body, pointed to the weight, and they made their way toward the surface. Once they got to the surface, they put their flag up and got on the boat once it arrived. They called the rangers over the radio and met them at the docks, where they met a fleet of park rangers and county officers. They cut the bags while they were taking their statements to find that someone had left 130 or so pounds of sugar in gallon Ziploc bags in the shape of a body. This story is told by the diver's son. When his father was in grad school, he did some field studies classes, some of which involved diving in Monterey Bay. One day he was diving and counting something off of the Santa Cruz Pier when he found a shopping cart with bricks, cinder blocks, and a chain attached to the handle. He naturally followed the chain and found a bare foot wrapped in the chain. He assumed something probably ate the rest of the body, and apparently his friends had seen similar things too. This next experience is from his dad's friend. He said he was on a shelf counting muscles when he felt something tap his tank, and he looked around and didn't see anything. He figured it was the seal because they do like to play. When he was nudged again, he saw it was a great white. He said he thought to himself, well, if it gets me, it gets me. I can't swim out. Let me know in the comments what you have experienced when either swimming, diving, boating, whatever it may be. I cannot imagine what is down in the ocean I do not plan to ever go down and find out.